I have had a bunch of people ask me about my dual battery setup on my Chevy Silverado. This is my work truck, and uh, the reason I got two batteries, uh, actually a couple reasons, but the main one is that I run a, an inverter out of this truck. And if you haven't seen it yet, I've got a video on the inverter. Basically that gives me power at the back of the truck so I can plug in tools and whatnot. But uh, it's a dual battery setup. You know, it'd be so cool if all vehicles had dual batteries, but as you know, when you look under your hood, you don't always have room like I do. This is a 1990 Silverado, and dude, there's just a lot of space. I could probably th fit a third battery in here. All right, I'm just gonna walk you through exactly how I've got my two batteries wired up. This is my main battery right here, and uh, I'm gonna go over some super basic stuff. Basically, this is my ground, right? Uh, ground here goes to the body, and it goes over to the block. All right, that's my black wire. Then I've got my red wire here, and you'll notice that I've got a splitter on here. I got two, right? I got my two wires. This is the customary feed here, and that just services everything. And the second wire trails along and wires with it, and I'll show you how it comes out over here. And it comes up here, right here. I'm tracking the same wire right here, and Boom, it goes to my isolator. Now the deal is that you do not need to have an isolator to run two batteries. You can just run your batteries in series. And in fact, on my bus, I've got two batteries in series, big boys and no isolator. But the cool thing about an isolator is that if you tap this battery, if you kill it running your inverter, like running your tools out of the back of the truck, you're not gonna kill the main battery. So it isolates this battery. All right, so back to the wiring. This comes in from the main battery, hits the isolator, which does its job of isolating the battery. Then the feed comes over here to the secondary battery. All right, and then this black wire is just the ground. Now, I've got some big old cables hooked up here for my inverter. And if you've seen my inverter install video, you'll see when I hook these guys up, this is the ground for the inverter. You could ground it to the body, but I grounded mine to the battery and then this is the feed for that inverter. Now I don't work for Stinger and they never sent me a free inverter or anything like that, but as far as I can tell, people are using these Stinger uh, isolators quite a bit and they're kind of like the top selling one on Amazon. There are a lot of other isolators on the market though, so I cannot vouch for Stinger. Like I'm not gonna say they're the best ones out there, but they seem pretty solid to me. They've got good reviews. I've seen videos of people putting them in and they seem pretty happy with them. My isolator is not a Stinger, it's older. I don't even know what brand it is. It's been in this truck a long time and I think just came from the auto parts store like Napa or whatever. You might be able to talk to one of those guys uh, at AutoZone or Napa or wherever you go and get some good advice on an isolator to get. Keep in mind that you've got different amperage ratings for your isolators. You can get a 200 amp one, 500 amp one. Now the other nice thing about Stinger is that they have straight up instructions on their website. You can pull down a PDF and that PDF is one page long. It's not a complicated setup. You've got to have a little bit of automotive wiring experience, but you don't have to be a pro at all to install one of these things. And then, of course, the second battery does not need to go under the hood. If you don't have room for it, or you want it in the trunk, you're doing this for a sound system or whatever, you can put that second battery just about anywhere. Okay, so here is my super simple pencil sketch of what's going on here and how to wire this puppy up. Uh, basically, you've got two batteries, number one and number two. Number one's like your main battery, right? That's like the battery that the alternator charges and it just like runs your vehicle. And then between those two, you're just putting a switch. You're just putting like a, a break in the connection between the two batteries. It's all you're doing with this isolator. What's cool though, is that the break in the switch only kicks on when the key is off. All right, so how do you do that? All right, you got your two batteries. Uh, number two, let's just say you're powering like some, you know, low amperage, low power power tools, you know, like a drill or something like that. You're not gonna be powering a welder off this setup with a single battery. Okay, so you got your isolator between the two batteries. And you'll see there are four poles on it, two big ones and two little ones. The two big ones just take the power cable, like the, the cable between the two batteries. Uh, the other one is a ground, and then the other one, the other small post, goes to an ignition source. 
And that's what I'm talking about. That's why when your ignition is on, this guy is open, the connection is open, the two batteries can reach equilibrium, you know, they're, they're talking to each other, etc. And then the ignition is off, the connection is off. There is no connection between the two batteries. That way you can drain number two, do whatever you want to number two, and number one will still start your car when you're hanging out at the beach. All right, so it's that simple. I'm just gonna run you backwards through it. This is my secondary battery, sometimes called a leisure battery. If you're running like a van or a work truck or a bus or something like that. This is my leisure battery. This is my feed into the leisure battery, the red wire, and it first goes to my isolator. So wire up the isolator and then it goes back to my main battery. All right, I hope that helps. It's just a simple overview of running two batteries with an isolator on that second battery in your van or work truck.